Greetings, students. Let's talk about how to interpret chi-square tests. Um, so why do we need the chi-square test? So this is an example of a statistical test. And statistics are really important in science because it allows scientists to actually analyze and sort of make conclusions about the strength of their data. So in other words, statistical tests tell us if data are different enough from what we expected in order to be remarkable, in order to actually like matter. Um, and the special vocab term we use for that is when the data have been proven to be different enough um, to matter, we say that they are statistically significantly different. So that means something really important. So the goal of all statistics and all statistical tests is to test the null hypothesis. Um, so remember that the null hypothesis is always going to be that there is no difference between two groups. Uh, the way I like to remember this is that the word null means zero. So like null hypothesis, zero difference. OK, so here's a little graphical representation of what this means. So in this example, group A is very similar to group B, right? In fact, it's exactly the same. So we would see that in this case, the groups are the same. Um, and we would say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the null hypothesis looks good. Um, we don't say the word except in statistics because it's like a little bit too bold and too strong. And so we just say we fail to reject. Okay. On the other hand, um, if group A is like really different than group B, if those data sets look to be very, very different, um, then we would say that we reject the null hypothesis, thumbs down. So in other words, that null hypothesis is that there's no difference. If there is a difference, that means that the null hypothesis wasn't right, so we reject it. Okay, so um, in the genetics unit, the null hypothesis we're going to be using is always the same. Um, so it's always going to be that there's no difference between the expected and observed phenotypes for offspring. Um, so for example, let's say we're doing a Punnett square and we expect out of 100 offspring that 75 of the offspring will be yellow and 25 would be white. Once again, that would come from a Punnett square. The null hypothesis is going to be that our observed results are exactly the same. In other words, that when we actually performed the cross, we got 75 yellow and 25 white. In other words, our um, Punnett square was like an exactly perfect prediction. So that's what the null hypothesis is always going to be. So the whole point of a chi-squared test um, is to calculate a chi-squared value. And the chi-squared value essentially tells us like how close the observed results are to what we expected. So I like to think of this as like a target. So if you're shooting arrows at a target and all of your arrows are like right at the bullseye, then the distance between your arrows and the bullseye is going to be like zero. Like they're right on target, right? Kind of same idea with a chi-squared value. If your chi-squared value was zero, that means your observed results would be exactly the same as the expected. On the other hand, if your chi-squared number is like a really big number, that would be like your arrows are all over the place, so the distance from the target is really, really far. Um, so in this case, our observed results would be very different from what we expected. So as a reminder, our null hypothesis is always going to be that there is no difference between the expected and observed phenotypes of offspring. Um, so, thinking about what this means, this chi-squared value, in the context of the null hypothesis. So, if our chi-squared is zero, that means our observed results are exactly the same as expected. They're right on target. So, in other words, that null hypothesis is exactly right. So, we would fail to reject, which is like except. So, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, thumbs up, it's good. And we would say that those observed results are not statistically significantly different than what we expected. On the other hand, if our chi-squared is way far off from the target, that means our observed results are very different from what we expected. In this case, we would thumbs down, reject the null hypothesis, and we would say that our observed results are statistically significantly different than what we expected. So once again, if we're right on target, that means observed and expected are the same, the null hypothesis is good. If we're way off target, that means observed and expected are very different, so then we reject the null hypothesis. Um, so obviously there has to be some sort of threshold between like zero and where do we decide if it's big enough. Um, and that threshold is called the critical value. So, sorry. <laughs> um, if our car squared value is less than the critical value, then we're saying it's close enough to the target. It's close enough to being right on that we would say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in other words, if the chi squared is less than the critical value, we're pretty close to the null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. 
On the other hand, if our chi-squared is bigger than the critical value, then we're too far off from the target, so we're going to reject our null hypothesis. Those reserved results are different than what we expected. Okay, so let's practice um, this understanding really quick. Okay, so should we reject or fail to reject? So once again, reject, thumbs down, or fail to reject, thumbs up, the null hypothesis. So our chi-squared is 2.31, and our critical value is 3.84. So 2.31 is less than 3.84, right? So we're less than the critical value. That means we're closer to the target than that critical value. Close to the target, thumbs up. That means we're pretty close to the null hypothesis. So we are going to fail to reject. In other words, those results are not statistically significantly different. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, let's say our chi-squared is 6.72 and our critical value is 7.82. What do you think? Yeah, so 6.72, that's less than 7.82, right? So that means we're close enough to the target, so we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. It's looking good. So in other words, these groups are not statistically significantly different. One more. So let's say our chi-squared is 10.53, and the critical value is 3.84. Well, 10.53 is bigger than 3.84, so that means we're too far off from the target. Um, we're going to, thumbs down, reject that critical value. So in other words, we would say that those results are statistically significantly different. All right. So that's how we use the critical value, but now we have to figure out how do we actually find the critical value. Um, so to find the critical value, you're going to use this chi-squared table. Um, this is given to you on the AP exam. It's part of the AP equation sheet, and it looks exactly like this. Um, so there's sort of like two pieces of information we need to understand for this table. There's this thing that says p-value. And then there's this part that says degrees of freedom. And then these numbers in here are the critical values. So let's start with p-value. So the p-value is essentially like how strict you want to be. In other words, like if you're thinking about those arrows getting close enough to the target, um, how close do we need those arrows to be to be like, eh, that's good enough. Um, so 0.5 is like medium close. 0.01 would be very, very close. Um, in general, in science, we use the threshold of p equals 0.05. So always assume it's going to be p equals 0.05, unless the problem explicitly says to use 0.01. Okay, and then degrees of freedom. Um, this is like a very wonky statistics thing. I'm not going to get too much into what it means. It's more important that you understand how to calculate it. So degrees of freedom is just the number of phenotypes minus 1. So let's practice. Um, so in this case, this is the same experiment as from before. We have two phenotypes here. We have yellow or white. So our degrees of freedom would be one because it's two phenotypes minus one equals one. That's how we find the degrees of freedom. Okay, right, let's do one more. So in this experiment, how many degrees of freedom are there? Once again, degrees of freedom is the number of phenotypes minus one. So in this case, we actually have four phenotypes. So one, two, three, four. So that means our degrees of freedom is going to be three because degrees of freedom is number of phenotypes minus one. I'm oh, sorry, that should say equals three. <laughs> okay, so now let's put it all together. What would be the critical value for this experiment? So once again, we're going to use this p equals 0.05 row unless told otherwise. And in this experiment, we have two phenotypes, which means our degrees of freedom is two minus one, or equals one. So we're going to be looking at this column here. So what's our critical value going to be? Well, it's going to be this right here, like the intersection of those two. Our critical value would be 3.84. Okay, let's do another one. How about this one? So in this one, remember, we had three degrees of freedom because we had one, two, three, four phenotypes. So that would be three degrees of freedom. And we're still using that p equals 0.05 row. So our degrees of freedom would be right here. So our critical value would be 7.84. So now let's bring it all together. Um, let's say we actually do the cross, we mate all these cats, we count the number of um, offspring, and we calculate this chi-squared value, and we get the result that our chi-squared is 4.6. So in other words, we're 4.6 off from the target. So the question is, what conclusion should we make? Was our prediction close enough, or were we far off? OK, so once again, that means we need to find the critical value in order to do this. So to find the critical value, we define the degrees of freedom. Once again, there are four degrees of freedom minus one. So it means that we have three degrees of freedom. We're always going to use that P equals 0.05 row. So that means our critical value is 
And once again, our chi-squared is 4.6. So 4.6 is less than 7.81. In other words, our chi-squared is less than our critical value, which means we're close to our target. In other words, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. It's looking pretty good. We're pretty close to what we need to be. Okay, so in other words, you would say that our observed results are not statistically significantly different than what we expected. All right, and that is how you interpret the chi-squared test in order to figure out if your predictions made from Punnett squares are actually spot on to what you observe in genetic crosses. Okay, so now go ahead and do some practice problems. Good luck.